Hello friends, this video on body fluids and circulation part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the role of the lymphatic system in our body. So now we got to know what is lymph, where is the lymphatic system, what is there in the lymphatic system. Let us see what purpose does it solve in our body. So let us look at the role of the lymphatic system in our body. <coughs> It is a vital part of the immune system and immune system is that uh, system of the body which helps to fight against infections and thus act as uh, the soldiers of our body. So that is the immune system. So lymphatic system is an important part of the immune system. So how we will see that very soon. Now, as I said, this is the lymphatic system. They are located very close to the blood capillaries. So, we have two network of capillaries of blood. So, this is called the systemic capillary network. So, what does this? What is the systemic capillary network? This this particular cycle is the systemic circulation, and this is the pulmonary capillary network because it connects to the lungs and pulmonary word is used in connection with lungs. So this is the pulmonary capillary network and this is our lymphatic system. So now let us see what does it do or what role does it play. Now the flow of the oxygenated blood from the heart takes place at a very high pressure that is this flow this is the oxygenated blood the red one now this oxygenated blood flows under a very high pressure and that is what is measured as the systolic pressure around 120 millimeter of mercury so this oxygenated blood flows out of the heart at a very high pressure. Now what happens when the blood flows at such a high pressure? This blood contains all the components plasma, IBC, WBC and platelets. Now due to high pressure when this blood reaches the thin capillaries, some of the blood or some of the fluid rather and the small proteins leak out through the capillary network into the extracellular spaces. That means since it is coming out at a very high pressure, so when it reaches these thin capillaries, some of the fluid and a little bit of small proteins, they, they actually come out or they leak out through these spaces through, through the small spaces now this leaking can happen uh, through the spaces between the walls of the capillaries right or the water can even come out passing the wall of the capillaries because water can pass through by osmosis or diffusion whatever you call it so that means water and some small proteins will leak out and they will come into the interstate the spaces between the tissues or the tissue spaces or interstitial spaces whatever you call it now the question is what happens to this leaked out fluid now it is something like this just think of this example let us suppose that water is flowing through a tube at a very high pressure okay let us suppose this is a tube and water is flowing through this tube at a very high pressure it is flowing at a very high speed now if you make a small hole here what will happen a lot of water will start leaking out like this when the water is flowing at such a high speed some of it will start leaking out from here and you would have observed it in uh, day to day life so the same thing happens here since it is coming at a very high pressure so when it flows through these thin walled capillaries some of the water and the small proteins will leak out of it now the question is what will happen to these leaked out uh, water and small proteins Okay, there comes the concept of the lymphatic system. So now this fluid from the tissue spaces or the interstitial spaces. So if you see these light yellow colored structure which you see here, these are the tissues and you can see some open spaces between the tissues. They are called tissue spaces. If you see tissue spaces and tissue cells, these are the tissue cells and these spaces are the open spaces between the tissues. So when the capillaries leak out these fluid and small proteins, they are in these tissue spaces. Now, this fluid 
it will start entering into the lymph capillaries. So here if you see the lymph capillaries are the green colored tubes, the thin tubes. Now it has been seen that the lymph capillaries are located under the skin surrounding these tissue cells. Now since they are located surrounding the tissue cells that is also a reason why this uh, leaked out fluid tend to enter the lymph capillaries. Now what would have happened if the tissue fluid would have not entered into the lymph capillaries or if there would have been no lymphatic system at all. In that case more and more fluid will start to get accumulated in these tissue spaces or the interstitial spaces and as a result there will be swelling of the tissues because too much water will get clogged in between the tissues. So that means this lymphatic system actually helps to get rid of all these extra fluid which might be present in the interstitial spaces between the tissues. So this fluid enters into the, uh, this fluid which contains mostly water and some small amount of proteins is termed as the lymph and this lymph enters into the lymphatic vessels. Now, one, no, lymphatic capillaries. Now, once it enters into the lymphatic capillaries, these lymphatic capillaries join together to form thicker tubes called the lymphatic vessel. Here you can see these are the lymphatic vessels. Now, these lymphatic vessels then pass through the lymph nodes. Now, if you see here, this lymph will pass through the lymphatic vessels to the lymph nodes. What happens at the lymph nodes? As I said, lymph nodes are the places where there are specialized WBCs, that is the white blood cells, which are called lymphocytes. You remember we spoke about the different types of the white blood cells. We talked about monocytes, lymphocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils. They were all types of uh, WBCs. So that, special, that type of WBC which is present in the lymph nodes are known as lymphocytes. Now these lymphocytes help to fight against any infection. They kill any bacteria or antigen or any other harmful substance that might be present in the lymph. And that way it purifies the lymph. Lymph is running but it is plasma only with lesser proteins. So the lymph gets purified at the lymph nodes and then again they keep flowing through the lymph vessels. Right? So that is how the flow keeps happening. Now finally these lymph vessels will open to the blood vessels just before it enters the heart. So this is the blood vessel to scan the deoxygenated blood, right? Now these lymph vessels will open into the blood vessels just before they enter into the heart and that means it sends the uh, this fluid which actually leaked out from here, it sends it back to the heart. So if you see here, the fluid which got uh, leaked out from the blood capillaries, they were meant to be carried to the heart. So this lymph vessels actually acts as an alternate path which takes up whatever fluid or whatever blood components got leaked up, it carries them and sends them again back to the blood vessels. So it is just an alternative path which carries the leaked out components back to the heart. Right? So that is the role of the lymphatic system. So now you understand what is the importance of lymphatic system. They help in immune system because they also help to purify the lymph or help to fight against infection. That is one thing. It helps to remove all the extra fluid between the tissue cells so that there is no swelling of the tissue cells. It also helps to uh, supply fresh plasma because the plasma becomes fresh as it gets purified in the lymph nodes. So it supplies fresh plasma and also some proteins to the blood. So that means it works. It serves a lot of function. Now let us quickly learn. This is how it is connected throughout the body. So if you talk about the lymph nodes, there are several lymph nodes located at different portions of the body. So now let us quickly look at the important points about the role of lymphatic system. It is a vital part of the immune system. As I said, the antibodies which are manufactured in the lymph nodes, they assist the body to build up effective immunity to infectious diseases. So the lymph nodes play an important role as far as the immune system is concerned. They remove excess fluid from the extracellular spaces back to the blood because the fluid, this lymph actually is nothing but blood plasma. So it comes from blood and it is sent back to blood with the help of the lymphatic system. 
returns plasma proteins to bloodstream. Now when a part of plasma gets uh, leaked out, so that plasma also contains several plasma proteins which are useful for the body. So along with the plasma, those plasma proteins are also returned to the blood. Lymph nodes help to fight against bacteria, antigens and other toxic materials and that is how they help in the defense mechanism of the body. Transport absorbed fat from intestine to blood. Now, we, we learned the process of digestion, right? We saw that the complete digestion of food and absorption of food takes place in the small intestine. Absorption of food happens through the villi, the small hair-like structures which are present in the small intestine. Now, when you talk about the absorption of fat, the fat molecules are quite big. So they are, it is difficult for them to enter into the thin blood capillaries. Now, the lymph capillaries are also thinner, but they are slightly larger in diameter than the blood capillaries. So, if this is your blood capillary, I'm just giving you a rough idea. They are far more thinner than this. If this is your blood capillary, then this would be your lymph capillary. If this is blood capillary, then this is lymph capillary. So, lymph capillary have slightly bigger diameter when compared to the blood capillaries. So, the fat molecules well, often once they are absorbed in the small intestine, they need to be transported to the blood so that blood can carry them to other parts of the body. Now it becomes difficult for the fat molecules to enter this thin blood capillary, but it becomes easier for them to enter the lymph capillary. So they enter the lymph capillary and then the lymphatic system carry them to the blood. So they carry them to the blood just before they enter the heart. So that means they never need to enter the thin blood capillaries so that so in that way the lymphatic system helps to transport the absorbed fat from intestine to blood transport white blood cells to and from the lymph nodes into the bones so they transport white blood cells to and from the lymph nodes into the bones because lymph nodes are the places where a lot of white blood cells are there so they are also transported from the uh, lymph nodes to the bones and vice versa. Transport enzymes and hormones from their production site to the blood as I said since this is also a fluid which flows from the different tissues towards the heart. So it can actually transport the enzymes and hormones which are being produced in different parts of the body and carry them to the bloodstream. So these are some of the important roles of the lymphatic system. Now let us have a quick comparison between blood and lymph since lymph is a part of the blood because it is nothing but the leaked out blood plasma. So let us see how are they different from each other. So if you talk about blood it is red in color due to the presence of hemoglobin in the RBCs whereas lymph is colorless. Blood flows rapidly, lymph flows slowly because blood flows rapidly because it is under high pressure when it flows out of the heart it comes out of high pressure and that is why it flows fast. Blood flows from heart to different parts of the body and vice versa that is the flow is bidirectional but in case of lymph it only flows from the tissues to the heart the opposite direction flow does not exist. Blood contains more proteins whereas lymph contains lesser proteins. That is because only the smaller proteins of the blood leaks out of the blood capillaries into the tissue spaces. So the lymph contains le lesser proteins when compared to blood. Blood consists of plasma, RBC, WBC and platelets. Lymph contains plasma and lymphocytes. So lymphocytes are again, they are special, uh, they are special type of WBCs. So that way is the composition of blood and lymph is also different. So with this, we end our discussion on lymph. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.